So today I'm not wearing any funny hats or sunglasses because I want to talk about something that's not that funny. A lot of people with mental health awareness increasing know about seasonal affect disorder mostly in the winter. Something I've experienced for pretty much my entire life is seasonal affect disorder not in the winter but in the summer. When I first started to experience this I wondered if it was just me or what was going on but the winter really doesn't get me down a whole lot. It's the summer that does. Maybe you're watching this and thinking that you're alone and experiencing this and you're not really sure what to do or what's going on with you. Over the years, I've put together some general things I've learned about mental health that apply to summer seasonal affect disorder. It's a bit different than how you would approach winter seasonal affect. So I'm gonna go through them. And some of these things, even doctors I work with don't know about this. Just as a little qualification as to why you might be listening to what I'm saying, I'm a registered nurse. I've worked in oncology, hospice, and surgery. Also, I have a prior degree, a four-year research degree in psychology. The first thing that I'll talk about when it comes to seasonal affect disorder in the summer is a lot of expectation. A lot of people have huge expectations for their summer. They expect to be at the beach, to be having a good time, to be partying, soaking up the sun, going on vacations. And I think social media has amplified those expectations tenfold because you see people who are influencers or who don't have to report to a boss and they get to go on vacation all day and take pictures of how awesome it is. Managing expectations in the summer is a huge thing. If you see a therapist talking with them about this, is very important because it might help you understand why your expectations are so high and how to make them more realistic so you don't feel so disappointed with yourself and with your life. Also in that same similar vein, maybe tapering or completely reducing the amount of Instagram and TikTok and all this other stuff that gets the comparison trap going in your mind. The second thing is overstimulation. In the winter, most people are understimulated, so they experience seasonal affect disorder as this sense of lethargy because, like most other animals in the world, they would be hibernating if they had the option. In the summer, however, what I've found with myself is that overstimulation is a much bigger issue. Think about going to the beach. There's a thousand people, loud noises. The sun's really bright. You're hot. If you're partying, you know, if you're, in, if you're drinking, if you're out all night because it's bright all night. Managing the amount of stimuli that you're taking in is very important. Finding what triggers you might be a helpful step. For example, some people are very sensitive to loud noises. So avoiding huge loud festivals or if you wanna to go to something like Coachella or Lollapalooza, just going to one day or half a day or having an escape plan when you know you're reaching that point of overstimulation could be an option. For some people, it's light sensitivity. I'll get into this more in a moment because it is a particularly interesting topic. Wear sunglasses, wear a sun hat, wear different things that can help you manage the amount of sun you have. If you're feeling really burnt out from the sun, maybe you sit in your apartment and draw the curtains down so that you can have some darkness for a little bit. These are just some examples. There's different ways that people can be overstimulated. The next point is also tied into this, is overexertion. A lot of people just do too much in the summer. They're at the beach all day, then they go out at night, they work during the work week, and then try and do things all night with their friends. They go to festivals all day, they're standing all day, they're overexerting themselves. Finding your balance is very important. If standing all day is going to make you tired, maybe you find a way to do activities where you're only standing part of the day or you take breaks to sit down. Maybe you reduce how much you've overscheduled yourself because overexertion plays into that. It can be so tempting because you see all this fun stuff happening that you want to be a part of all of it during the summer. I'm going to encourage you to listen to your body. Don't overexert yourself because the problem is. You'll get to what I'm going to talk about as the final stage, which is burnout. So you think about the sun being too hot. I like these phrases, burnout. It's very literal. When you are burnt out, you have overexerted yourself. You have overstimulated yourself. And as a consequence, you crash. You're too tired to do anything. You just want to sit inside. I experience this frequently. 
Finding a way to find your tempo in the summer is very important. Learn how to take breaks. Learn how to regulate your body temperature. Learn how to eat enough. Not overschedule or overcommit yourself or overpromise yourself to people. This is very important if you suffer from summer seasonal affect disorder. One particular thing a lot of people are not aware of that is very important. If you suffer from summer seasonal affect disorder, likely you might have anxiety or depression all year long. This is something I experience as well. If you take medication for that, whether it's a tricyclic antidepressant or a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, otherwise known as a SSRI, it is possible that you may become more sensitive to heat and sunlight. Um, if you look up general research, so if you look up PubMed, Google Scholar, NCBI, what you can find pretty readily is they don't know exactly how or why, but when you take tricyclics, some other antidepressants, and SSRIs, it can predispose you to heat intolerance, heat exhaustion, electrolyte imbalances, and acute confusion or delirium from those other three things. Find out if this is something you experienced. The first time that I had a summer when I was on SSRIs, I thought there was something seriously wrong with me. My thinking was messed up. It was all cloudy. I was confused all the time. I was tired all the time, thirsty all the time, craving salt all the time. Knowing that this is a normal thing when you are doing too much is very helpful. For me, knowing that I was not going through some acute health crisis, but really this is just a side effect of the medication I'm on, helped me a lot because then I could adjust my life accordingly. Now when I go out, I wear a wide-brimmed hat, I wear sunglasses because I get very photosensitive. You know, if you don't believe in medication, you take a natural supplement like St. John's Wort, it makes you photosensitive too, which means you're sensitive to sunlight. On the brighter days in the summer, for me, it's really difficult. I wear sunglasses pretty much all day, unless I'm inside because I don't want to look like a dingus. And I will wear a wide-brimmed hat that is vented for cooling and shade for my face. I will carry around a water bottle. I will additionally carry around electrolyte solutions. And I will take breaks as much as I need to because things stop being fun pretty quick when you have had too much heat exposure and too much sunlight exposure and you're already predisposed to having heat intolerance and exhaustion. That's something a lot of people don't know about. I'm telling you now, if you're on an SSRI or a tricyclic, take care of yourself. Be aware of it. If, if you've been wondering what happens to you every summer, talk with your psychiatrist, make it known that this is an issue, they can work with you, and then also do those supportive care measures for yourself so that you don't pass out or crash your car because you're hot and you're tired and you're having heat stroke behind the wheel, all right? Those are the main things for me in terms of ma managing summer seasonal affect. Uh, for a lot of people, maybe you're aware of this, uh, but I'd love to hear in the comments if you experience summer seasonal affect. It's lesser known. I think it's less common, but I think a lot of people probably experience it and don't know that it's happening to them. So I'm going to encourage all of you this summer, take care of yourself. If you know that you experience summer seasonal affect, maybe take some of these tips. Maybe you've got better tips. Leave them in the comments. If you've been wondering what's happening to you every summer and you're not sure and this is the first time you've heard about it, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try and respond. But this is an important thing. You know, summer for a lot of people can be a hard time. There's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of pressure. I mean, it's like New Year's Eve for three months. Just don't be too hard on yourself. Take care of yourself. Take breaks when you need it. And reach out to someone if you need help. Because what can make summer seasonal affect difficult for a lot of people is that they think they're supposed to be happy in the summer. And they feel guilty and ashamed that they aren't feeling happy and that they're not enjoying their summer. So I am telling you, I'm sending you love. Take that pressure off yourself. I hope that you do have a good summer where you get to do fun things and respect your body and your mind's boundaries.